well, it was actually for both of you. I'd like both of y'all's takes. Um, I currently, my nine to five is an IT director for a small municipality. Um, being in that setting, my question is a lot of um, decisions of, about, you know, workflow and direction and things like that uh, from an executive level, even higher than myself, are typically very uh, small town, politically motivated. I typically try to steer clear of that, but what do you do when you're backed into a corner, kind of forced to choose a side? What's the best way to defuse it? That was kind of That's an question. awesome one. It's a great question. Yeah, it's a great it's question. Are really you going one. first? You want me to jump go ahead, in? Go ahead. Um, first of all, um, part of getting rid of the drama is watching your language. And so if you're saying things like I'm forced into and how do you avoid getting forced into, um, you still have to agree with that. You're not forced to do anything. The best place for you to stay is in neutrality, not because you're trying to, you know, um, not be brave or pick a side, but because your job is to facilitate. And so you really watch your language. And so when somebody's like, oh, my gosh, we got three projects dumped on us, you just stitch the drama. You're like, we have three new projects. Tell me more and you're just always translating and if people are feeling like you're they're forcing it what i want you to do when they want to force opinions it's usually because they're talking about blame like who's to blame or whose fault is this or who's wrong and who's right what i want you to do as a leader you manage energy not people or ideas is you manage energy away from why we can't to how we could and so what you do is you just say um, rather than, you know, figuring out who's part or who's piece or who's side, what I want to do is let's talk about what we want to create and let's talk about how we could get there because you are the, the manager of the energy. And so when you get into politics, politics is just relationships with drama added. So if you want to you know, even change the word of politics and just get into relationships. And instead of picking sides, it's just like, I'm going to seek to understand and seek to add that which is missing. And it's a really Zen way to move through it. But you're always listening for what people know and then listening for what they don't know and then asking them if they might be interested in hearing um, another way that could be more inclusive. And then that way you move into just naturally selling your ideas. The uh, Drew, I think Drew, right? uh, Drew, I think there's a couple interesting things that I want to add on top of that, which I agree with. Number one, uh, size right, but as we all know, and I'm, I know she knows, there's other people in the equation. Absolutely. And so, like you know, you know, Ruthie could, you know, you could give her all this, you know, doing the right thing, and she's still not going to respond to it. Rick is not going to respond to it. One thing I always tell people is like, doing the right thing is always the right thing. Always. Like what Sai just said. Just continuously always doing that and realizing that's the only thing you actually control is very liberating. It's so you're liberating. You're not debating or trying, you're just staying the course on that truth. And I really do think that people are watching and you yeah. gain leverage from the historical correctness of your actions. It's not in the moment over Correct. time. And so for me, it comes, it comes down to leverage. Life is. is about leverage. And be careful of your own judgments because once you're judging, you're not helping. I always tell people, stop judging, start helping. Once you go, oh, they're trying to be political or they're playing games, judgment. When you're judging, you're not serving, you're not adding value, you're not leading. This is just someone talking through an idea with you. Stay neutral and just try and focus everything you got on what can we create for the small municipality and how we're going to get there. And people know from that repetition that that's really the only way to engage with you I think what's super important on the leverage front Drew is the following which is let's talk about what we're talking about here you have a job yeah. and it sounds like you'd like to hold on to it at least for right now otherwise you wouldn't be holding on to it right so to me here comes the leverage if you're doing what Sai's telling you and doing it the right way people are seeing that you aren't what, whatever you want to call it choosing sides I don't to your point I don't like thinking of it that way yeah. just you're doing the right thing. The truth is on your side. You're yeah. trying, the, you have the right intent, you're trying to execute the right way. Everybody is seeing that. If your organization is festered with small town politics, over time, the municipality has advantages over a business, yep. but people are gonna leave, people are gonna do things, like things will happen, there'll be turnover. My intuition is, you're gonna have leverage with those people that leave and the good ones are gonna wanna bring you into their new world, Absolutely. so that was leverage. And the number two thing you should be doing, and everybody should be doing this, is 
you should also be creating leverage for you to have options and getting job offers or starting your own thing yeah. so that if you wake, if you get there to Thursday and you just are fucking tired of the 139th time that you had to listen to Pam and Jerome yeah. debate about freedom. something, you should just say, you know what? Today's the fucking day. I'm going to work at this other place's IT. See ya, Jerome. See ya. But Gary, that's so important because people, I tell people, stay in peace, like stay and do this stuff and use your leverage or go in peace, like stay in joy or go in peace. The but there's no third option. There's no so third option. So many people stay in judge and stay in sabotage and stay in They're part of the problem. And they're part of the problem. They're part of the because, problem. You, know, you it's wake all up about, and you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm part of the problem. Exactly. Stay in joy or leave in peace. When it gets to that, but I also um, just, I know that you are always co-creating, and so your response to that is so important. And a lot of people come to me with drama, and people ask me all the time, Sai, when colleagues come to me, how do I ditch the drama? I mean, that's really the basis of the question. Sure. And... um, You do two things. One, you say something incredibly positive that you mean about the opportunity at hand, and it makes a statement about you're in. And then secondly, you focus on what can we do next to help. So if somebody comes up to me and they're like, Gary's not doing this crap, and Gary's really behind, and he does this crap on purpose – I'm going to come out in a strong way. I go, I love Gary. Love that guy. Super what should we be doing? What should we be doing to help Solid him? Cute. What should we be doing? He's adorable. What should we be doing to help? And most people will say, well, I'm not getting involved in that hot mess. And then right. I'm like, great. What do you want to do next for this project? And it just shows them we're either helping mm-hmm. or, we're, or we're out. Love that. And uh, so, yeah. Drew, any, you, you extract any value there? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Leverage, brother. Find one, you yeah. know, attack it head on and create a parallel universe that you can jump to if you feel like absolutely. you can't do anything about it. Yeah. Most awesome. of us Let's get drained by our external environment, and it's only when we give that power. Like, I can live, pe- there's two ways to go through today joy or misery, same job, same boss, same everything. The difference is in the story, I believe. How much responsibility in these situations do you put on the ultimate boss? In the macro of everything you've been talking about. I think what percentage, you know, and maybe I like percentages. You want my honest? You want my yeah, honest? I want, no, I'm here for your <laughs> bullshits. We're all here, Cy, for your straight I horseshit. I put zero percent on the boss. Now, is it good to have? Is it good to have if I have a ma- me? A this high accountable, yeah. a high accountable meeting, a great environment is yeah. the sweet spot. Yeah. However, for my happiness today and my success, I put 0% on my boss. And here's a toxic work. You're yeah. auditing a toxic work environment. Yeah. You are putting 0% on the CEO. You're putting it on the collective of everybody. I'm putting on the individual at hand. I understand. Because they're the ones that's in front really of me that need it's funny. It's funny. I, and this is not a joke, and people know this, and you might even know this because I know you've seen some of my content. I legitimately think 100% of the issues at VaynerMedia are my fault. But what you're saying is, cool, Gary, that's yeah. fine. I want Have you fun. to think that. Have and fun. then I want Tyler to think that 100%, he's got something oh, to he do doesn't. with it. Oh, he doesn't. <laughs> you know, I but I want, Jake definitely doesn't. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. answer isn't either or because that's the blame game. Is it the leader or the employee? I get that asked all the time from the stage. Is it, you know, so my employer doesn't do this for me. If you're the one in front of me, it's all you. Love it. Now, let's be forward. The Keep organization, talking. yeah, the organization also has responsibility in that. They're not going to be in business very long or win the war on talent. Correct. But it, the sweet side is when both is there, but I can only work with the person in front of me. I totally understand that. I love that. And it's my climate. I love that. <laughs>